there YouTubers, Pep Prepper here. Today I'm going to demonstrate a couple different handling and uh, restraining techniques on cats and hopefully this will make everybody's experience when having to work on a cat uh, a little bit safer and a little bit more pleasant and make it go quicker. Now um, the first thing that I want to say is whenever I'm working on a dog I always hook them up to a lead, a noose, and then secure it to uh, a location that's, you know, like um, an eye hook or, you know, a rope that I've got secured to the wall. And that ensures that the animal isn't going to jump off the counter and it kind of gives me a third arm to work with um, when I'm working on them. Now, when, when you're working with cats, it's a whole different story. Um, it's just a completely different world. So that I never, ever hook up a cat. If he loses his mind and starts spinning around, there are going to be toenails and teeth flying everywhere and I might not be able to get a hold of him to calm him down and so you you know you you're taking the chance that he could strangle himself so I, I never ever hook up cats um, to anything around their neck now the first method that I'm going to show you is probably the most common in um, commonly used in the pet profession and what it is it's called the scruff hold and some of you might think this looks kind of mean but this isn't hurting the cat at all and what it actually does is it kind of puts them in like a trance like state and it, and it sort of calms them down. So this this Johnny Cash, he is uh, one of my barn cats, and he doesn't like to be touched or even pretty much looked at by people, but I just came across him laying on something in the barn and grabbed him up, and <laughs> you'll probably never see him again unless you see him taken off when he, when he sees me. But um, So, okay, so what I'm going to do is you just want to grab... Let me, I hope you can see this. You'll just want to grab the the loose skin on the back of the cat's neck. And what you can do is you can kind of use your arm and pin them down to the counter. And you can brush or if if you have to clip, um, you can clip. And um, or you can have another person there doing doing the grooming while you're holding. And another thing you can do is hang on to the front feet, especially if they have front claws. And you can lay them on their side and that person can work on the back end or you know on the stomach or just do brushing um, pretty much anywhere on the body. Another thing you can do is lay the cat on its back and um, this this is the this is the technique I use all the time when grooming cats. I groom quite a few cats and um, so uh, like I said I work by myself and so I have to come up with different ways that I can hold the cat and I've only got two arms so my legs come in really handy a lot and what you can do is use your use your knee or your leg to hold the cat's tail down so you can work on the stomach or you can also um, kind of pin the cat's leg down and you know you can stretch the legs apart if you have to work in the groin area um, okay you can also hold the cat up by its scruff and um, you know you probably want to have somebody's you know another person there to do to do the nail clipping or whatever it is but um you know just put your hand underneath his butt to help you know support his weight but this is this is a really good move and it's really really common okay the second thing I'm going to show you is the kitty taco and I'm going to have to hang on to him still because he just wants to take off but when you cover a cat's eyes um it also calms them down and, um, oh, another thing I should probably show you is if you've got somebody hanging on to the cat and the cat's really stressed, if you just kind of tap in between their eyes, I, I'm not sure what that does, but it, it works great. So it, I think it just kind of keeps their mind off of what's going on. So um, you can cover their eyes with the towel and you just uh, wrap up their front feet, especially if they have front claws, this is, this is a great method. And you want to keep make sure that the cat's um, face is still out of the towel so he can breathe. But kind of try to keep the eyes covered. And this will probably take two people. Uh, I don't typically use this because the towel just gets in the way of what I'm trying to do. But, um, you know, it, it works great for cats that, that are almost to the point where they have to be sedated for grooming. So um, sometimes we can, we can prevent that. So... And what you'll want to do is just hang on to the scruff, you know, through the towel. And the other person can work on the back end and move the towel up as they need to, just making sure that these front feet are still nice and secure in the towel. Okay, so the third thing I'm going to show you is a cat muzzle. And I use these quite often also. And like I said, if um, 
or maybe I didn't mention it, but if you cover the eyes on a cat, they kind of become disorientated and they are pretty much afraid to move. So um, a cat muzzle looks a little bit different than a dog muzzle. It's got a hole in the front for um, their nose to peek out so they can breathe. And you'll just put the muzzle on the cat's face and strap it nice and snug to the back, making sure that their ears are out the top there. And you can still hang on to the scruff. Now, if, if the cat's really overweight, um, the when you're hanging onto the scruff, the muzzle might keep moving forward until the until the ears are underneath it and then the muzzle's gonna slide off. So just just be careful of that. And you'll wanna just make sure that the cat's nose is still peeking out the front so he can breathe. And this this makes it really nice and easy to to work on animals. You know, if there's an injury or you have to do any grooming or whatever it is. Um, now a couple of things Cats, cats are different than dogs, like I said, and they get stressed really easy. And it's just a completely different state of mind that you have to be in when you're working on them. Now, one of the things that you can do before you start grooming, or when your cat is relaxed, you know, um, but definitely before you start grooming, check the color of their gums and their tongue. And be really careful because if they bite down, you're going to get bit. But um, you want the gums nice and pink, and if they start turning white at all when you're grooming them, you know, keep checking on them every once in a while. Or, God forbid, if they start turning blue, you need to put that animal down and give it a break. So, um, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour, or just even start the, again the next day. But, um, you know, just a little hint, if you put your cat down, make sure he's in a, a small room or, you know, in an easy place that you can catch him again, because otherwise you're going to be chasing him all over the house and... That's going to stress them. Another thing that you can you can watch for, um, cats aren't real big panters. When they pant, when they open mouth breathe, they, they're typically stressed. And so if your cat is doing that, I would, I would recommend giving them a break also. So these are some handling techniques on cats, and this is Johnny Cash, Pet Prepper.